Hey guys, so, whoo! I leave for Berlin in one week from today. Uh, it's kind of, I leave next Monday, which is the 30th, and it's, I'm really excited. So, you're probably wondering, well, what's been going on? You've been posting to Instagram, we want to know. So, uh, first things first, uh, all my costumes are here, uh, except for my last ball gown, but it's being, it's currently being made uh, by like a local artist uh, that I've been collaborating with, so I'm gonna have that by the end of the week. Um, all my day dresses are currently being tailored and um, fitted for my corset and of course embellished as well because, you know, um, I bought one of my dresses off of Amazon and what do you do? You embellish it to make it look more period. <laughs> Well, the most cool thing, coolest thing, that I recently was able to get done was uh, as a gift for everybody who's in the Irish family, like at least the main family. Sorry servants, sorry extended family. But I got portraits done of all the players. So I got pictures done of uh, me, my siblings, my mother and father, and they're all uh, pictures of the actual players of the characters, except for one, which is the first son, Harry, which was this one. And uh, he dead, so no one's playing him. Uh, so we we just took a reference off of uh, off of Google of, of a World War One soldier, and we're like, oh, that's that's Harry's face. So <laughs> we all kind of like decided as a family. But I got the portraits done by an amazing artist named Lou Boyer. Uh, thank you so much, Lou. You did such an amazing job. They are beautiful, and I love them. So yeah, that's all the portraits and stuff are going here. Uh, for letters, I, I've been exchanging a few letters with Jean-Pierre still, uh, but I think it's everything's kind of at the point now where we're just gonna wait for game. Like, there's no sense in developing anything further. It's more like, oh, okay, instead of having this play out through text, we're gonna play this out in real life. So, I mean, this is, may not be the most exciting update, but it's kind of like the last minute crunch. Uh, I did a really cool filming for a video that uh, is going to be coming hopefully out later this week. And I worked in um, partnership with uh, my, uh, two friends of mine, Patrick and Solo, and they are great cinematographers and editors. And we have put together a homage to a song that has essentially inspired me and kind of kept me going in the last couple of months as like Helena's song. And we've done a really great, beautiful video off of that that we spent a really long time filming and editing and we hope that you really enjoy it when it comes out. So hopefully that should be out later this week. We're just gonna be uh, putting the finishing touches on it. I'm, I've hit this like surrealist state where it's like, is it actually happening? Like, it's happening and it's kind of crazy. And I'm really excited, but also absolutely terrified because I want to do good. And like, I've been talking to so many great people and making so many new friends like online. I hope they're not disappointed when I <laughs> meet them in real life. But it's just kind of like, whoa, whoa. It's a week away. <laughs> oh my god. I've also gotten my wigs, which actually you can see there's this horrific mannequin with pins in its face. But, um,. This is one of my day wigs I'm going to be wearing as Helena. This is actually what I bought to be my main day wig. Um, I have to give a huge shout out and thank you to the historical hairdresser for making all of my wigs and making them beautiful. And look at all, oh my god, look at this guys, it's incredible. So this is going to be my daytime hair for Helena. And uh, then I have this wig, which is, oh boy. This wig is my nighttime hair, which I'm only going to be wearing to bed. And uh, this was styled by my friend Clockwork Creations, so thank you very much to her as well. Uh, but I bought about three wigs from the historical hairdresser. Ooh, and these are my evening wigs. So this one has like a little curl in the back, it's cute. And then this one has a curly front. It's kind of almost like Greek in style, but I love it, it's so pretty. So all the wigs are like a middle brown color. It's actually very similar to what my natural hair color is because believe it or not, I don't actually have black hair. It's really funny because this is finally one of the days I have my hair out and done and I'm gonna put a wig cap on and show you what the wigs look like. So I'm gonna take off my glasses so I'm going to be blind, forgive me, and let me put the wigs on. So this is the first wig. This is my 
daytime wig. Now, I just put it on. I don't have this pin, so it would be a little bit tighter to my head um, when I'm actually wearing this for fair weather. But... So this is the style Joyce from the historical hairdresser. So when I saw this, I really fell in love with it because it gave me like this Mary Poppins vibe. And I'm all about that vibe. <laughs> I'm all about that life, that Mary Poppins life. So um, I basically, I reinforced these wigs as well with a little bit of hairspray because uh, some of the curls did come loose during shipping, which is okay. I expected that because, you know, it's not like the United States Postal Service cares that there's wigs in the box. So I just, this hair is extra crispy because it is not... It is not moving, but it is really beautiful, and I think the color looks really good uh, with the green eyes that I'll be wearing, so this is wig number one. Now on to wig number two. Okay, and this is wig number two, so this is Moira uh, from the website. Now, I have to say, Moira probably took the most damage in shipping. Um, a lot of the front curls had come loose, so I kind of had to reform everything together. So this doesn't look exactly like it did in the picture. I still think it's an absolutely stunning, um, stunning do, and like I have reinforced it myself. But um, it doesn't look 100% the same as it does in the picture. But I still think it's it doesn't take away from its beauty at all. I still think it's really gorgeous. So this one kind of gives me some super Pride and Prejudice vibes. Um, if I'm honest. I'm not sure what dress I'm gonna wear this with because I have I basically got two different wigs for my two different ball gowns, but I'm not sure which one I'm gonna wear for which. Um, but yeah, so this is this is my fancy hair, <laughs> and I, I wanted to get a color that was like plausible to be my own, and this is actually the closest uh, I could find that's like close to my actual real life hair color before I dyed my hair black. So yes, how are you feeling this side curl? Liking the side curl? I like the side. curl. Okay, wig number three! Okay, so this is wig number three, and I think this one is my favorite. This is the Josephine. So, Josephine is actually the style that made me decide I want to go with the historical hairdresser, because I saw this and I was like, I need it! Ah! So, this the Josephine was perfectly fine in shipping, there was like no problems with it. Um, I did pin down some of the curls a little bit more on the top, because it was like kind of super poofy up here, and I felt it looked more... Uh, it seemed to look more like earlier in the century because this is, you know, the slurp takes, is taking place in the 1900s, so I felt it felt a little bit more Victorian with some more of the poof, so I calmed down some of the poof, but um, otherwise I didn't, I didn't change a thing, and I, I think this hair is stunning. Um, this is really, like, one of my favorite styles if, like, I've ever worn for hair. <laughs> and I've worn a lot of wigs in my day, alright? So I, I just think it's really gorgeous. There was some feedback I could give to the historical hairdresser. It would be to um, use some wig pins to make sure that the wigs don't come off or slide around and shipping on the wig head. Because uh, I think that's really what disrupted most of the curls. But otherwise, I they're perfect and I absolutely love them. And, you know, sure as heck saves me a lot of time because there's no way I was ever going to be able to style my hair like this for fair weather. A big thank you to the historical hairdresser, um, Flo. The designer and stylist did such a great job. Uh, if you guys, you know, ever want to order from uh, the historical hairdresser, I can only but absolutely recommend them wholeheartedly. The next thing I wanted to kind of talk about was um, role play and boundaries. So I am, uh, I'm not single. I am dating my lovely boyfriend, Will. Uh, he's actually over at the channel LARP Analysis, which is, I think, still getting off the ground. But uh, me and Will have been dating for about a year now, and we had to talk about some of our rules when it came to romantic roleplay. And if you're with a partner and you're interested in doing romantic roleplay with people other than your partner, I think it's really important to establish these rules and have really great communication. Um, I think when couples actually like keep in communication and talk things through, it usually ends up for a positive experience for both parties. So we kind of clearly defined what our rules of comfort were, what we were okay with, what we weren't okay with, like were we okay with kissing, hugging, what kind of touching are we not okay with, what's, you know. So me and him basically went on the rules of like, anything that would happen at a really awkward middle school date is okay, and basically like stage performance, so like a stage kiss. You know, you're not gonna pull them behind the door and like hardcore like French kiss them with your tongue. <laughs> like, but 
I mean, every every couple is gonna have uh, their own rules, and it's important to make sure that not only you and your partner understand your boundaries, but the person you're playing with does as well. And you know, you should ask them, and hopefully, you know, they ask you too. What are your boundaries? What do you feel comfortable with? It's always great to keep these in mind because you never want to make anybody uncomfortable during the LARP. And it's also really important to know that just because somebody flirts with you in game does not mean those feelings carry outside of game. That's something really important to put a wall there because it's like again it's like stage acting guys or like movies you know just because two actors kiss for a, a part doesn't mean that they want to kiss in real life and like date and stuff like that it's everything's about consent communication and safety you know you guys want to make sure that you're safe so no matter what larp you're in whether it's a nordic larp a boffer larp if you're interested in doing any type of relationship role play and you're with a significant other my personal recommendation would be to make sure that you clearly communicate what either you're looking to do in that romantic relationship to your partner and then also to the person that you're going to be in that relationship with just so that there's no problems or jealousy because again i'm kind of more in the field of if everybody's on the same page then there shouldn't be any problems right um and don't break that trust that's that's as simple as that make sure that everybody that you're playing with is always on the same page as each other like even my family um <laughs> my dad and my dad <laughs> who is, um, you know, he's going to be really strict to me in game. So he asked me off game if like there were certain aspects I wasn't comfortable of or things that I didn't want him to play up. And it's again, really, if you're in those kind of roles where you're either an authoritative figure or, you know, you're flirtatious or anything like that, get people's consent, talk to them, uh, because it's only going to serve to help you and help them and everyone's gonna feel comfortable which means a good game <laughs> uh, my relations are in order my costumes are basically in order uh, more or less it's just waiting for the final details to come in i promise i will do a costume showcase when i come back from fairweather manor i promise pinky swear i promise um otherwise I hope you guys enjoy the upcoming video that I'm putting out. I put so much work into it. Me and both of my friends really did, so we hope you love it. And also keep an eye out. Um, I'm going to be posting uh, here or there in parts my live stream with Devil's Luck Gaming. Um, I think I'm just going to post like chunks of the stream. Um, and it was our playthrough of Coma Ward, which was super awesome. It's a great board game made by Everything Epic US. They were really kind to send me a demo of the game, and we just absolutely enjoyed it. It was a ton of fun, and I hope you guys enjoy watching the playthrough as I post it. But I'm getting excited. Things are happening, and I guess I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!